In rock and roll, few bands have achieved the success of Three Dog Night. With their soaring harmonies, infectious hooks, and chart-topping hits, they seemed poised for superstardom. But behind the scenes, a darker story was unfolding. Join Facts First as we present Chuck Negron reveals why Three Dog Night split up. The Rise of Three Dog Night Formed in 1967 by lead vocalist Danny Hutton, Chuck Negron, and Corey Wells, Three Dog Night was a band built on the power of three distinct yet complementary voices. Hutton with his smooth, soulful tenor, Negron with his gritty, blues-inflected baritone, and Wells with his electrifying rock and roll swagger. Together, they created a vocal alchemy greater than the sum of its parts. Backed by a lineup of top-notch musicians, including keyboardist Jimmy Greenspoon, guitarist Michael Alsup, bassist Joe Skirmy, and drummer Floyd Sneed, Three Dog Night quickly made a name for themselves in the vibrant L.A. music scene. Their big break came in 1968 when they were signed to ABC Dunhill Records by famed producer and music mogul Jay Lasker. From there, it was a rocket to the top. Three Dog Nights' self-titled debut album, released in 1968, yielded their first hit single, a cover of Harry Nilsson's One. The song showcased the band's signature vocal interplay and reached number five on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, announcing Three Dog Night as a major new force in popular music. Over the next several years, they unleashed a relentless string of hit singles and best-selling albums. Songs like Mama Told Me Not to Come, Joy to the World, Black and White, Shambhala, and an old-fashioned love song became ubiquitous on radio airwaves and turntables across the country. The band's innovative approach of taking songs from up-and-coming writers like Randy Newman, Laura Nero, and Hoyt Axton and transforming them into their own indelible hits earned them a reputation as master interpreters and tastemakers. As their popularity skyrocketed, so did the scale of their live performances. Three Dog Night became a top concert draw, packing arenas and stadiums with their high-energy, hit-filled shows. The chemistry between Hutton, Negron, and Wells on stage was palpable, their voices intertwining and soaring to thrilling heights, whipping crowds into frenzies of excitement and adoration. Off stage, the bonds between the band members seemed unbreakable in those heady early days. More than just bandmates, they were brothers, united in their passion for music and their determination to make their mark on the world. Little did they know that the same forces that propelled them to success, the relentless touring, the pressure to keep the hits coming, the rock and roll lifestyle, would soon begin to take their toll. Cracks begin to show. Three Dog Night rode the wave of their unprecedented success into the early 1970s, but the cracks in the band's foundation began to show. The relentless pressure of touring, recording, and maintaining their position at the top of the charts took a heavy toll on the band members, physically and emotionally. At the heart of the problem was a growing addiction to drugs, particularly heroin, which infiltrated the inner circle. Chuck and Danny, two of the lead vocalists, found themselves in the grip of addiction. The rigors of the road only exacerbated the problem. Three Dog Night was a band in constant motion, their tour schedule a punishing blur of endless bus rides, smoky arenas, and late-night parties. The lifestyle that seemed once so glamorous and exciting now felt like a prison, a never-ending cycle of exhaustion and excess. In the recording studio, the band's once effortless chemistry began to fray. The pressure to churn out hit after hit to keep the machine running at full throttle led to creative tensions and disagreements. The joy and camaraderie that had once defined their songwriting sessions gave way to frustration and resentment. Negron, in particular, found himself at the center of the storm. His heroin addiction had begun to affect his performances both on stage and in the studio. He would disappear for days on end, leaving his bandmates to cover for him and pick up the pieces. The once tight bonds of friendship and loyalty that had held the band together began to unravel. Desperate to keep the band afloat, Three Dog Night's management team resorted to increasingly drastic measures. They hired a full-time nurse to monitor Danny Hutton's health and keep him functioning on the road. They staged interventions and forced band members into rehab, hoping to stem the tide of addiction. But even these efforts couldn't stop the inevitable. The cracks in the band's foundation had grown too deep. The damage, too far gone. Tensions boiled over into outright hostility, with physical altercations erupting between band members. The once unbreakable bonds of brotherhood had been shattered, replaced by bitterness and recrimination. For Chuck Negron, the breaking point came in 1976. 
His addiction had spiraled out of control, his once powerful voice reduced to a ragged whisper. He found himself alone in his hotel room, staring down the barrel of a future that seemed bleak and hopeless. The Breakup As the 70s wore on, the once bright star of Three Dog Night began to flicker and fade. The band's foundation had been eroded by addiction, infighting, and creative stagnation over the years, resulting in deep cracks that had grown into gaping chasms. The breaking point came in 76, during what proved to be the band's final tour. Danny Hutton had been fired due to his escalating drug problems. Bassist Joe Skirmy had also been let go, his own struggles with addiction rendering him unable to perform. For Chuck, it was a moment of reckoning. The final show of the tour at the Greek Theater in Los Angeles was a poignant reminder of just how far the band had fallen. Only three original members remained, Negron, keyboardist Jimmy Greenspoon, and guitarist Michael Alsa. The magic that had once electrified audiences around the world had scattered, replaced by exhaustion and despair. In the aftermath of that final show, Three Dog Night disbanded. There was no dramatic blowout, no singular moment of conflict that tore the band apart. Instead, it was a slow, painful unraveling, the cumulative weight of years of excess and dysfunction finally bringing the band to its knees. For Negron, the breakup of Three Dog Night was a personal and professional devastation. He had poured his heart and soul into the band, sacrificing everything for the sake of the music. Now he found himself adrift, his once promising career in tatters, his life consumed by the ravages of addiction. Looking back on the breakup of the band, Negron recognizes that the band's demise was not the result of any one factor, but a perfect storm of circumstances that conspired to tear them apart. It wasn't just the drugs, he says. It was the lifestyle, the constant touring, the pressure to keep churning out hits. We were young and naive, and we didn't know how to handle it all. We thought we were invincible, but in the end, we were just human. He also acknowledges the role that mismanagement played in the band's downfall. He describes a culture of exploitation and greed, with managers and record labels working the band into the ground in pursuit of ever greater profits. The Aftermath For years, Chuck struggled to find his way back into the light, but even in his darkest moments, he never lost sight of the power of music to heal and transform. He knew somewhere deep inside him the spark of his talent still burned, waiting to be reignited. Slowly but surely, he began to rebuild. He got clean, got married, and started a family. He reconnected with former bandmates, mending the broken relationships. And he began to sing more, his voice emerging from the ashes like a reborn phoenix. He released solo albums, toured the country, and shared his story with audiences around the world. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite song from Three Dog Night? Let us know in the comments section below.